the attack on Mers el Kar copyright Burr, part of Operation Catapult and also known as the Battle of Mers el Kar copyright Burr, was a British naval bombardment of the French Navy at its base at Mers el Kar copyright Burr on the coast of what was then French Algeria on July 3, 1940. A Royal Navy task force attacked the French fleet, after giving them a warning that they would do so. The French fleet was at anchor and had not been expecting an assault from the United Kingdom. The attack resulted in the deaths of 1,297 French servicemen, the sinking of a battleship and the damaging of five other ships. France and the United Kingdom were not at war but France had signed an armistice with Germany, and the UK feared the French fleet would end up as a part of the German Navy, a fate that would greatly increase the Kriegsmarine's size and combat ability. Although French Admiral Frenet Section Noir Darlin had assured Winston Churchill the fleet would not fall into German possession, the British acted upon the assumption that Darlin's promises were insufficient guarantees. In response to the British attack at Mers el Kar copyright Burr and another at Dakar, the French mounted air raids on Gibraltar. The Vichy government also severed diplomatic relations with the United Kingdom. The attack remains controversial. It created much rancor between Vichy France and Britain, but it also demonstrated to the world and to the United States in particular, Britain's commitment to continue the war with Germany at all costs and without allies if need be. Background In 1940, after the fall of France and the armistice between France and Nazi Germany, the United Kingdom became concerned about the possibility that the Germans would acquire control of the French fleet then under the control of what became known as the Vichy government. The combined French and German naval forces would mean that the balance of power at sea might tip in Germany's favor, threatening Britain's ability to receive raw materials from across the Atlantic and its communications with the rest of his empire. The British government feared the possibility despite the fact that the armistice terms at Article 8 Paragraph 2 stated that the German government solemnly and firmly declared that it had no intention of making demands regarding the French fleet during the peace negotiations, and similar terms existed in the armistice with Italy. Furthermore, on June 24, Admiral Darlin had given assurances to Churchill against such a possibility Winston Churchill ordered that a demand be made that the French Navy should either join forces with the British Royal Navy or face neutralization in some way, in order to forestall any possibility that the French ships might fall into German or Italian hands. In a speech to Parliament, Churchill repeated that the French armistice with Germany was a betrayal of the Allied agreement that forbade each country from surrendering to the Germans without notifying its allies. This French betrayal, added to by the German Nazi government's history of not respecting previous agreements, led Churchill to declare to the House, what is the value of that? Ask half a dozen countries, what is the value of such a solemn assurance? Finally, the armistice could be voided at any time on any pretext of non-observance. The British Empire was faced with a situation of having the French Atlantic ports in German hands at a time when enormous problems were looming in the Mediterranean where the British needed to keep the German fleet out of that sea or restrict the Italian fleet within those waters and blockade the Vichy ports. Given the need to keep Britain's Atlantic approaches opening to convoy traffic, the Royal Navy simply did not have enough ships to provide a permanent blockade to the Vichy naval bases in North Africa. The risk of having either the Germans or the Italians seize the French capital ships was too great to contemplate. The French fleet was widely dispersed. Some vessels were in port in France. Others had escaped from France to British control ports, mainly in Britain and Alexandria, Egypt. Operation Catapult was launched to take the French ships under British control or destroy them. In the first stage, the French ships in the British ports of Plymouth and Portsmouth were boarded without warning on the night of July 3, 1940. The only resistance came from the crew of the French submarine Surcouf then the largest submarine in the world. This vessel had made its way to Portsmouth in June 1940 following the German invasion of France. The crew resisted the boarding and three Royal Navy personnel, including two officers, were killed. A French sailor also died. Other ships captured included the two obsolete battleships Paris and Corbett, the destroyers Triumphant and La Copyright Opard, eight torpedo boats five submarines and a number of less important ships. Many, including the Surcouf, 
went on to be used by the Free French forces. Some sailors joined the Free French while others were repatriated to France. The attack on the French vessels at Port Sodanger amongst the French towards the British and increased tension between Churchill and the leader of the Free French forces, Charles de Gaulle. Prelude, ultimatum, the most powerful concentration of French warships at the time was the squadron at the port of Mers El Car copyright bear in French Algeria. This consisted of the World War I era battleships Provence and Breton, the more modern battleships Dunkirk and Strasbourg, the seaplane 10 de Commandant Test and six destroyers under the command of Admiral Marcel Bruno Gensoul. British Admiral James Somerville of Force H, based in Gibraltar, was ordered to deliver an ultimatum to the French, stating, It is impossible for us, your comrades up to now, to allow your fine ships to fall into the power of the German enemy. We are determined to fight on until the end, and if we win, as we think we shall, we shall never forget that France was our ally, that our interests are the same as hers, and that our common enemy is Germany. Should we conquer we solemnly declare that we shall restore the greatness and territory of France. For this purpose we must make sure that the best ships of the French navy are not used against us by the common foe. In these circumstances, his Majesty's government have instructed me to demand that the French fleet now at Mers el Kabir and Iran shall act in accordance with one of the following alternatives. a. Sail with us and continue the fight until victory against the Germans. b. Sail with reduced crews under our control to a British port. The reduced crews would be repatriated at the earliest moment. If either of these courses is adopted by you we will restore your ships to France at the conclusion of the war or pay full compensation if they are damaged meanwhile. c. Alternatively if you feel bound to stipulate that your ships should not be used against the Germans lest they break the armistice, then sail them with us with reduced crews to some French port in the West Indies a Euro Martinique for instance a Euro, where they can be demilitarized to our satisfaction or perhaps be entrusted to the United States and remain safe until the end of the war, the crews being repatriated. If you refuse these fair offers, I must with profound regret, require you to sink your ships within six hours. Finally, failing the above, I have the orders from His Majesty's government to use whatever force may be necessary to prevent your ships from falling into German hands. Somerville did not present the ultimatum personally. Instead, this duty fell to the French-speaking Captain Cedric Holland, commanding officer of the carrier HMS Arc Royal. Admiral Gensoul, affronted that negotiations were not being conducted by a senior officer, sent his lieutenant, Bernard Duffy, which led to much delay and confusion. As negotiations dragged on, it became clear that neither side was likely to give way. French Navy Minister Admiral Darlin never received the full text of the British ultimatum from Admiral Gensoul, most significantly with regard to the option of removing the fleet to American waters, an option that formed part of the orders Darlin gave to Gensoul, to be followed should a foreign power attempt to seize the ships under his command. Attack The British force consisted of the battler cruiser HMSA Hood, battleships HMSA Valiant and Resolution, and the aircraft carrier HMS Ark Royal, plus an escort of cruisers and destroyers. Despite the approximate equivalence of force, the British had several decisive advantages. The French fleet was anchored in a narrow harbour and despite the unequivocal terms of the ultimatum, did not expect an attack and was not fully prepared for battle. The main armament of Dunkirk and Strasbourg was grouped on their bows and could not immediately be brought to bear. The British capital ships, with their 15-inch guns, also fired a heavier broadside than the French ones. Before negotiations were formally terminated, British fire swordfish planes escorted by obsolete Blackburn skewers were dispatched from Arc Royal to drop magnetic mines in the path of the French ship's route to sea. This force was intercepted by French Curtis H-75 fighters. One of the skewers was shot down by French fighters and crashed into the sea, killing its two-man crew the only British fatalities in the action. A short while later, on Churchill's instructions, the British ships opened fire against the French. The British opened fire at extreme range on July 3, 1940 at 1754. The French eventually replied but ineffectively. 
the third salvo from the British force and the first to hit resulted in a magazine explosion aboard Breton, which sank with 977 of her crew dead at 1809. After some 30 salvos, the French ships stopped firing. Meanwhile, the British force altered their course to avoid fire from the French coastal forts. Provence, Dunkirk and the destroyer Mogador were damaged and run aground by their crews. Strasbourg and four destroyers managed to avoid the mines and escape to the open sea. As they did so they came under attack from a flight of bomb-armed swordfish from Arc Royal. The French ships responded with anti-aircraft fire and shot down two of them, and their crews were rescued by the destroyer HMSA Wrestler. The bombing attack had little effect and Somerville ordered his forces to begin pursuing at 1843. The light cruisers HMSA Arthur and Enterprise reported engaging a French destroyer. At 2020, Somerville called off the pursuit, feeling that his ships were all deployed for a night engagement. After weathering another swordfish attack at 2055 without damage, Strasbourg reached a French port of Toulon on July 4. Subsequently, on July 4, the British submarine HMS Pandora sank the French of Iso Regalt de Genaoli, sailing from Iran. That night, French Air Force bombers carried out a retaliatory raid against the British fleet at Gibraltar to minimal effect. Since the British believed that damage to Dunkirk and Provence was not very serious, British fire swordfish aircraft from Arc Royal raided Mers el Kabir the morning of July 6. One torpedo hit the patrol boat Terre which was moored alongside Dunkirk and was carrying a supply of depth charges. Terneuve quickly sank and her charges triggered a large explosion, causing serious damage to Dunkirk. The last phase of Operation Catapult was an attack on July 8 by aircraft from the carrier HMSA Hermes against the French battleship Richelieu, at Dakar. In response to the actions at Mers El Car copyright Burr and Dakar, the French Air Force launched retaliatory bombing raids on Gibraltar, including a half-hearted attack on July 14, when many bombs landed in the sea, and heavier raids on 24 and 25 September. Aftermath, at Mers El Car copyright Burr, 1,297 French sailors were killed and about 350 were wounded. Two British aircrew were also killed. Relations between Britain and France were severely strained for some time and the Germans enjoyed a propaganda coup. British Admiral Somerville was not enthusiastic about the action, saying that it was the biggest political blunder of modern times and will rouse the whole world against us. We all feel thoroughly ashamed. Although it did rekindle anglophobic feelings in France, the action demonstrated Britain's resolve to continue the war alone and rallied the British Conservative Party around Churchill. Churchill later declared the action meant that for high government circles in the United States, there was no more talk of Britain giving in. Harold Nicholson reported the House of Commons to have been fortified by Churchill's report of the action. The French ships in Alexandria under command of Admiral Rena copyright Emile Godfroy, including the World War I-era battleship Lorraine and four cruisers, were blockaded by the British in port on July 3 and offered the same terms as at Mers El Car copyright Burr. After delicate negotiations, conducted on the part of the British by Admiral Cunningham, the French Admiral agreed on July 7 to disarm his fleet and stay in port until the end of the war. They stayed there until they eventually joined the Allies in 1943. The ships Dunkirk, Provence and Mogador were partially repaired and sailed back to Toulon. In early June 1940, about 13,500 civilians had been evacuated from Gibraltar to Casablanca in French Morocco. Following the capitulation of the French to the Germans, and the attack on Mers El Car copyright Burr, the Vichy government found their presence an embarrassment. Later in June, 15 British cargo vessels arrived in Casablanca under Commodore Crichton, repatriating 15,000 French servicemen who had been rescued from Dunkirk. Once their French servicemen had disembarked, the ships were interned until they agreed to take away all the evacuees. On November 27, 1942, the Germans attempted to capture the French fleet based at Toulon as part of Casey Anton, the military occupation of Vichy France by Germany. All ships of any military value were scuttled by the French before the arrival of German troops, notably Dunkirk and Strasbourg. 
for many in the French Navy this was a final proof that there had never been a question of their ships ending up in German hands and that the British action at Meurs el Car copyright Burr had been an unnecessary betrayal. Within days Churchill received a letter from Admiral Darlin, in which he wrote, Prime Minister you said to me I hope you will never surrender the fleet. I replied, there is no question of doing so. It seems to me you did not believe my word. The destruction of the fleet at Toulon has just proved that I was right. Casualties French casualties in the action were distributed thus. Two British servicemen were also killed. Orders of battle, see also, Attack on Pearl Harbor, Battle of Casablanca, References, Notes. Sources, Afun, Paul and Mordal, Jack, The French Navy in World War II Greenwood Press ISBN 0-8371 8660-9, Collier, Paul. The Second World War, The Mediterranean 1940 Euro 1945. Osprey Publishing. ISBN A 978-1-84176-539-1 An online version at Google Books, Green, Jack and Massignani. Alessandro The Naval War in the Mediterranean 1940 Euro 1943 Chatham Publishing, London ISBN 1-885119-61-5, Lastall, Philippe. Could Admiral Gensiel have averted the tragedy of Mers el Kabir? Journal of Military History 67 No. 3 pages 835 Euro 844 online, O'Hara, Vincent P. Struggle for the Middle Sea, the Great Navies at War in the Mediterranean Theatre, 1940 Euro 1945. Annapolis, Maryland, Naval Institute Press. ISBN A 978-1-59114-648-3 Thomas, Martin. After Mers El Car Copyright Burr, The Armed Neutrality of the Vichy French Navy, 1940 Euro 43. English Historical Review 112 No. 447 PPA 643 Euro 670 and JSTOR, External Links, A Plan of the Mers El Car Copyright Burr Anchorage, msu.org.uk, Mers El Kabir of French Made for TV Movie, Churchill's Sinking of the French Fleet, DigitalSurvivors.com, Churchill's Deadly Decision, Episode of Secrets of the Dead Describing the Attack and the Events Leading Up to It, Capes, Irwin. J. Mers El Kabir, A Battle Between Friends, Military History Online, Transcript of the Battles of Britain, a BBC radio programme in which Michael Portillo argues that the action at Mers El Kabir was as important to British survival as the Battle of Britain.